All of our hope as Christians hangs on the resurrection. The apostle Paul said, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is fertile. You are still in your sins. The apostle John tells the story of resurrection from the perspective of someone who was actually at the empty tomb and as someone who saw the risen Christ. His words echo down to us through the passing years. We hear him saying to us, along with Mary Magdalene, I have seen the Lord, and now there is no doubt. We have hope and we have a future. But do we remember? Do we think of the pain he suffered? Does our skin crawl as we think of the rough, heavy beam being laid across those shoulders so recently beaten? Does the back of our neck ache as we see him struggle through narrow streets past jeering crowds? Does the pit of our stomach grow cold as we hear him warn, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children? As we stand at the foot of the cross, do we marvel that in his pain he can forgive? Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing, even as a small voice says to our hearts, them or me. Do we fall on our faces in anguish weeping as we hear him commit his spirit into his Father's hands? Jesus said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Do we slowly lower him from the cross, gently wrapping him in grave clothes, saying, we have hoped he was the one? Do we run like Mary Magdalene to tell others that he has risen? Our point with all of this is that many Jewish people looked back and did not see what was before them, surrounding themselves with traditions. They missed what was happening before their eyes. We Christians, too, surround ourselves with traditions, eggs, roasts, turkey, family, and friends. All of this to celebrate his resurrection. But we, like many of the Jews of Jesus' day, may be missing what is happening. Is Christ moving in your life? Is he just the reason for the season? Or is he the reason for your life? Imagine yourself in the worst of all possible situations. Imagine yourself as one of the disciples or as one of the women who follow Jesus. Imagine that he is no longer among you because, this, because he is dead. You saw him die. You saw them bury him in the tomb. There is no doubt. There is no hope. There is no future. You huddled together behind a locked door, fearing that those who tortured and killed him would come and find you next. What will happen to you, to your family, to your friends? There is no doubt, there is no hope, there is no future. You heard him say when he was alive that the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. But you have forgotten those words, or at least they hold no hope for you now. The horror of crucifixion is still fresh in your mind. You see and hear him in agony there, die right in front of you when there was nothing you can do. You think about your part in all of it and wonder what you could have done differently. You have been fighting and hiding for days, but now it is Sunday. Early on the first day of the week, while it was dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone has been removed from the entrance. So she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bends over and looks inside of the tomb and seen the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. John bends over and looks inside of the tomb, but did not go in. Then came along Simon Peter behind them, who went straight into the tomb and sent the strips of linen lying there and the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was in its place, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Mary Magdalene said, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. And as she turned around, she saw Jesus standing there, 
but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. At that time, Mary Magdalene turned towards Jesus and cried out, Rabboni. The word Rabboni means teacher. Mary Magdalene falls down in front of Jesus, clasping his feet. Jesus gently helps her up to her feet as he speaks to her. Jesus says to Mary Magdalene, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. Mary Magdalene told them, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, meaning twin of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, We have seen the Lord. Thomas shook his head in disbelief and said, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And speaking just to Thomas, Jesus said, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said, My Lord and my guide. Then Thomas falls down to worship Jesus. Jesus raises Thomas gently to his feet as he speaks to him. Jesus said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Imagine yourself in the best of all possible situations. The Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was dead, is now alive again. By the power of the living God, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and is alive forever. The terror of yesterday is gone, and the fear of tomorrow has vanished. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, mankind can be forgiven of sin. And because he has been raised from the dead, mankind can live forever. There is no doubt. We have hope. We have a future. God bless each of you, and happy Resurrection Day. Good morning, St. John. Three months ago, our Sunday school lost a faithful and devoted servant who labored long and labored hard in God's vineyard, teaching and preaching God's word. On December 26, Reverend Maurice Watts' earthly presence and earthly light were extinguished when he transitioned to his new home in glory. Our scripture teaches us in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10 that God has given each of us some special blessings and he asks us to be sure to use them to help each other passing on to others God's many special blessings. Reverend Watts was a Sunday school teacher and not only did he use his special abilities to teach God's word but he was also faithful and also committed to serving and helping others. Each Easter Sunday, Reverend Watts and his family would prepare and distribute Easter baskets 
to all of our youth and all of our adults following Easter Sunday service. And he and his family would prepare Christmas gifts and Christmas baskets for our church family during the Christmas holiday season, all in support of our Sunday school program. And so, today's Easter program is dedicated to the life and service of Reverend Watts for his unwavering labor of love and support of St. John Baptist Church Sunday School. And now as I prepare to close, please join me in a moment of silence as we reflect and as we remember the life and service of Reverend Maurice Watts. Let us pause. Thank you, and may God continue to bless each of you richly. Good morning, Saints of St. John Baptist Church. This is Donald Gist. What a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. These are the announcements for the week of Sunday, April the 4th, 2021. Virtual Sunday School. Virtual Sunday School, Sunday, April the 11th, 2021 at 9 o'clock a.m. Join us via Zoom on your computer or cell phone. The message will be Ezra, Faith and Action Preacher. Background, Ezra 9th chapter, 10th verse. Thank you to the St. John Baptist Church, Pastor Graham and the St. John family. I'm so blessed and thankful that my church family and many friends joined me in celebrating my birthday. Thank you very much for all of your greetings, gifts, and warm wishes. Yours in Christ, Ophelia D. Owens. Thank you from Ms. Martha Thompson, to Pastor Graham and St. John Baptist Church family. Thank you for your spirit of generosity and kindness shown to me on my birthday. Please continue to pray for me as I journey through my golden years. May God's blessings follow you always. Much love, Martha J. Thompson. Thank you to Pastor Graham and the St. John family. My daughter and I would like to thank you for your prayers, phone calls, and cards. We appreciate your get well wishes. We are so grateful that you all cared for us. May God continue to bless you all. Augustine Bailey and Kanisha Connell Carnish. Richland County Rental Assistance. The Richland County is now offering rental assistance to residents beginning Monday, April 5th, 2021. For those of you who wish to access or call, please call 1-855-216-9198. Starting Monday, April 5th, 2021, the phone line will be open from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Telephone call-in hours are Monday through Friday, and the hours are 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. And on Saturdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Congratulations are in order for Kristen Pearson. Kristen Pearson is a senior at Heathwood Hall Episcopal School. He broke the school record in his two-mile event and the school record in the 4x800 relay at the Bob Jenkins Coaches Classic for Region 4 Track and Field Meet. The meet was held on Saturday, March 26, 21. This is the second time this track and field season Christian has broken his school record in the 4 by 800 relay. He also qualifies as one of the top 16 competitors from Region 7 meets that are being held around the state to advance to the Elite Coaches Classic. Congratulations again to Christian Beers. Once again, the scholarship applications for the Israel Brooks Foundation uh, will open on April the 5th, 2021. This is for the school year 2021 and 22. We encourage parents and also our students to please make application for the Israel Brooks Foundation. And once again, thanks to Ms. Barbara Brooks, Ms. Nadine Brooks, and all of the Brooks family and the St. John Baptist Church for your support of the Israel Brooks Foundation. Corporate prayer, seeking to draw closer to God. Wednesday, April the 7th, 2021. Join us at 7 a.m. 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. Praying with power. Call our line at 803-573-0268. Bible study, Facebook Live, studying the Word of God. Join us Wednesday, April the 7th, 2021 at 6 o'clock p.m. 
You can call 803-573-0268. COVID-19, new vaccine information line. If you have questions about COVID-19 vaccines or need help finding vaccine providers, call the new COVID-19 vaccine information line at 1-866-365-8110 between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., seven days a week. Have a general question about COVID-19? Call the VA care line at 1-855-472-3432 between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., seven days a week. Messages left after hours will be returned. Congratulations and happy birthday to our four score members. April 2021, Ms. Esther Rhee Anderson, Ms. Maddie Davis, Ms. Wilhelmina Kelson, Mr. John Brown Jr., Deacon Jesse Fryson, and Ms. Essie Mae Harris. Best wishes to all of those who are celebrating a birthday this month. You may visit our website and Facebook for additional information. Our weekly Bible verse, and the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Matthew 28, fifth through the sixth verse. Have a wonderful Easter, a safe week, and we thank you from the St. John Baptist Church.